Can a knife that is designed to be either tactical or a self-defense knife be useful as a bushcraft knife? Well, that's the question I've tried to answer for myself. So I have been carrying and using the Armager 4 from Demco Knives for a few months now, and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Demco Knives for sending me the Armager 4 so that I could share it with you. So this started a few months ago when Mike Wallace of Demco Knives reached out to me and said, would you be interested in reviewing the Armager 4 or any of the Armager series? I wasn't sure. I took a look at the website. I took a look at the designs and I responded to Mike saying, Mike, I'm not sure. Those are all military looking designs or, or self-defense or tactical looking designs. I'm not sure that my viewers are interested in that type of knife. And he said, I understand. However, there is one knife in the lineup that makes it maybe a possible crossover. And that's the one that has the clip point. So yes, I did agree to take the clip point version of the Armature 4. And yeah, I've been using it for a while. I was really surprised and you'll see why in a moment. So there are other knives in the lineup from uh, Demco knives that are in the Armature series in different blade shapes. This again is the clip point but they also have the American Tanto as well as the spirit point and I believe that the Tanto and the spirit point also come with serrated edges so uh, I just wanted to put that in oh there oh yeah there is one other knife Mike did send me two knives this little guy this is the Armager 2 and this is called the shark foot or shark fin uh, version of the blade so I'll talk to that about in a as well as we go along but not a lot to say on it nice little knife and very much more useful than I anticipated but I want to do most of my talking on this knife so what I thought I would do is bring you in a little closer give you some close-ups of the knife itself give you the specifications for it and talk about its design of course I'm going to do a few demonstrations with it and then I'll share my thoughts on whether this actually does make a reasonably good bushcraft knife all right just before we take a closer look at the knife itself just just take a look at the sheath so I'll set the knife aside for a moment so the sheath is designed very much like the sheath for the Demco free rain which I previously reviewed by the way I did bring the free rain out so I can give you some size comparisons as well this is a, a composite sheath in the sense that there are multiple components to it so the center part where the knife resides is nylon but not glass reinforced nylon because we know now that glass reinforced nylon tends to dull knives but it's not structurally as strong regular nylon so what Demco has done is came up with a sheath that you can take apart for maintenance by the way but they have included a nylon or a glass reinforced nylon pieces around the outside to give it the structural integrity it needs but where any point where the contact with the sheath and the knife come together it's just straight up nylon so it's not going to uh, damage the blade in any way so the strap system very simple it is removable it is reversible and so there's no issue there actually it's reversible without even have to take remove the strap the strap is heavy duty nylon there is a dome snap at the top actually i'll put the knife back in so you can see what it looks like in the sheath and put the snap on and yes you're wondering yes i do have a little piece of uh bright orange paracord on it so there is the snap holding it on on the, for your belt it has both the velcro and dome snap attachment making it easy to get on and off and remain very secure on your belt I like that a lot it could ride a little lower for me but that's only because my backpack waist straps tend to come right about where the knife is but uh, other than that it's great now one of the things about this sheath uh, that I think is an advantage or uh, I don't want to say an upgrade because it's just different design. One of the things I like about this version over the free range just a tiny bit is just how easy this knife is to come out. Now it's secure in there, it's not going to fall out. You know, it's not going to fall out, but it's easier to get out. The tension that holding the knife in is just a little bit less. Maybe the depth is a little less uh, where it grabs onto the, the uh, handle of the knife, but just a little bit easier to get the knife in and out. And the other thing I'll say is, if you want to take the sheath off, you can use other mounting things like ulti clips. Now, I don't have the proper size ulti clip for this, but if you wanted to wear this in your pocket with an ulti clip on the outside and use it as EDC for a more discreet carry, it's actually very uh, very likely to be, work out. The other thing is you can also mount the strap. Obviously, it has the, the holes here where you can get some nylon webbing through. And there's any number. When it comes to that, now you've got all kinds of options of how you're going to mount it to your pack or even around your ankle. And I say that for a reason because this is in the boot knife 
class of designs for knives, and I'll get to that in a moment. So get the sheath out of the way, and let's get on to the specifications for the knife. It's misleading when you see this on the website. You can read the specifications, but it's not until you get it in your hand that you realize this is not a very big knife, not very big at all, especially when you think tactical. You think tactical or fighting knives, they're gonna be big in nature. Not this one, this, but then again, if you think boot knife, then it does fit right in. A self-defense knife, not an aggressive knife, but well, aggressive enough, I guess, if it's used for self-defense. But let's just go through the specifications for the knife. So knife only, the weight is 5.43 ounces, 154 grams. If you put it in the sheath, you take it up to 7.62 ounces or 216 grams. Overall length, that's from tip to pommel, is 8.6 inches or 218 millimeters. The blade length itself is four and a quarter, still very reasonable, four and a quarter inches or 108, millimeter, or 108 millimeters, yes. Blade thickness is point one five sevenths of an inch or four millimeters thick not overly thick but not overly thin either the steel is 80 cr v2 high carbon steel which has been powder coated and yes i did scrape some off of the spine i'll talk about that in a few minutes time the sheath as we talked about is a uh, thermoplastic and rubber combination oh sorry not the sheath the, <laughs> the grip thermoplastic rubber composite I'm not quite sure what that means. It's different than the free rein, and I'll, I'll talk more about the handle as we go through the knife design. And as you saw, the, the sheath is a molly compatible, so you can uh, strap it on any number of ways of doing it. It is manufactured in Taiwan and sold through Demco Knives in the United States. All right, let's get into the design. So let's start with the blade itself. So I already mentioned this is a clip point and that's evidenced right here, clip point design. And I did also say that the other armatures or, or this armature four is available in a spear point. So a true dagger style, as well as the American Tonto uh, design as well. But this is the one I chose because I felt it was the most like an outdoor knife, single edge, not a double edge knife like the spear point is. So uh, not a lot to say there. It is a high saber. It's not a full flat grind. You can see there's a little bit of flats over the top here. So it's still a high saber. It does have a secondary edge on it and it came, as you would expect, incredibly sharp and has maintained that edge. Now I have sharpened it. Well, I have at least, I have honed it. Let's put it that way. I haven't had to resharpen it because I haven't had any nicks or rolls or any dulling really of it, but I do like to keep my knives very sharp. So when I get it home after a good use, I do hone it and get it back into shape. Now let's move back to the handle because here is where things change a little bit. This is where it begins to look more like a defensive knife, like a boot knife. And that the first evidence of that is the double guard above and below. So if you look at the handle, it looks like a traditional dagger style handle. Well, it is, that is a traditional dagger style handle. By the way, it is full tang, it runs through. It's not full broad tang. The tang is hidden inside of the rubber over mold, but it does have a small protrusion at the back to indicate that it is full tang. And you can, yes, you could hammer on that if you need to. There is a tube lined uh, lanyard hole right here. And once again, well, look at it. It's all black. If you drop that, I know I'm going to lose it. So I did have to put a little bit of paracord on it for me. Now, the only other thing to say about the handle itself is there's a little bit of thumb jumping or not thumb jumping so much, but it's jumping right up here. You could hold it there like that for thrusting and that type of thing. But again, I'm looking at it as an outdoor knife, but that's the only jumping on it. But look at this texturing, now the, the, it's thin, right? It's not very thick through here, but it is thicker through here. So it's still got that ratio that I like, even for a small knife. But it is contoured with a little bit of a recess here, and then again at the back. So it's a little bit thicker through this portion, but it is flat sided. It's meant to be compact, low uh, impact silhouette. So it's not going to, you know, imprint on your clothing, your pant leg, your belt, or your jacket, or whatever else you're carrying it in. So again, remember the design intent for this. But does it work as a bushcraft knife? Well, that's the question I wanted to have answered for myself, because of course, that's not the focus of all my knife reviews, is does it work out here in the woods? Let's answer this question right now. <laughs> 
I did, was able to throw sparks without doing any filing on the back, but not sufficiently. But a few strokes with my file, and now I've got the bared steel, so it is ready to throw sparks, and it will do so quite well. Be aware, of course, now that I've exposed the carbon steel, it is, you know, possibly could rust, so uh, you just have to be conscious of that. But other than, otherwise, well, you know, you take care of your knives, they're not going to rust. That's just easy enough. And if it does get a little bit of rusting on there, wipe it off a little bit of sandpaper, oil it, and you're good to go. All right. Uh, I just want to show you this, how it fits in my hand. You can see it's not a big knife, very small knife. In fact, this is a good time to bring in the Demco Free Rain so that you can see the comparison between the two. So if you have not watched my review of the Demco Free Rain, this is their first, Demco's first foray into fixed blade knives and still stands out there as a classic, an instant classic. And I like this knife a lot. I did ask for it in the blue just to be a little bit different, but it does also come in the green, I believe it is. And when they do produce this in Magna Cut, you can get it in gray. Uh, that'd be a nice knife to have, honestly, is the one of this like this in Magna Cut. It's a big knife. I referred to it as a burly or I guess Burley Bush Bushcrafter. It is definitely a bigger knife, but still very capable of bushcraft tasks. Sliding over into the survival knife. So this is the knife you do not have to worry about the tip breaking off or batoning this or doing any of the tasks you might with a survival knife. It's not very big, mind you, but it's definitely bigger than the free rein. Let me see if I can bring the two of them in side by side. How about one on top of the other? So you can see that the free rein is much bigger than the Armager 4. Much bigger, but uh, you know, this is still very capable of being used in hand. It still feels good in the hand. That's when I picked this up and I said, man, this is a small knife. How am I gonna get on with it? Well, let me do a few demonstrations and you'll see. But before I do, let me bring in the smaller knife. This is, I wasn't sure if it was a for real knife or not, but it actually is more useful than I gave it first credit for. So this is the Armager 2. And this is the sheep's fin, or not sheep's fin, uh, shark fin knife blade. It could be sheep's foot or, you know, it has any number of names, but Demco calls it a shark's fin. It is a stainless steel, entry-grade stainless steel, but look, it's just a tiny little knife, right? It's very a small utility knife. It is a nylon sheath on it, and it does have just a nice little clasp for hanging it from things. It's almost a keychain knife is maybe the best way to look at this, but do you, I'll have to tell you, this is the knife that resides um, in my house, on my nightstand, or in my little office area where I work at videos and, and the like. And this is the one that I use for opening everything up, all the packages. That's ideal for opening packages. All the little tasks where, you know, yes, if I have a pocket knife, I might use this, but this is just so convenient to have that it does all the little tasks. You can do any small, like maybe a quartering an apple with it, or doing some peeling of any other, you know, vegetables with it. It's not a big kitchen knife by any mean. And it is small, and it's called the Armature 2 because it has a 2-inch blade. Well, I'm not going to do any demonstrations with this knife. Suffice it to say that it's definitely up to the task, but it's not a high-level stainless steel, so you do have to run it down a ceramic rod or something every so often. But it stays in the sheath, and I actually carried it in here today, hanging off my web gear on my backpack like that so that I'd have something that was easy to get at. Just more than anything else. I suppose it could be even a little neck knife if you wanted it to be. Okay. I've talked about this. This, of course, I will put the specifications for this and the links for this little tiny guy in the video description along with the ones for the Armature 4. But I think now it's time to get on to doing a few demonstrations. All right, the first demonstration will be batoning. So the piece of wood I'll be using is a piece of rock maple, 10 to 11 inches in length, two and a quarter, two and a half inches in diameter. It is well seasoned, but it's not at all punky. It's still very, very, very hard and uh, a little bit naughty. Yeah, it's, and, and you can look at the twists in it. So I think a good test for this knife. At the same time, this is the biggest piece, as big a piece of wood as I would baton with this knife, or actually most knives after this would probably be an ax. So a good test for the Armager 4. It does span it, as you can see, almost just barely, but it does span it. So let's just, well, need a little bit of a turn on it. See how this is gonna work out. Oh, that wood is hard. I have found the knot. There we go. Well, not quite. 
There we go. Yeah, I was definitely into the knot. How's that for a piece of wood? Look at that. Wow. All right. So the first question, it's not a matter of could it uh, take the, the abuse or take the test. I just wanted to see if there's not a thing. Oh my goodness. That feels as sharp as it did when I first got it. And you can see by looking at it, it, I haven't been babying this. I have been testing it with quite a bit of rigor. In fact, let's just do exactly that. This also, this is a piece of oak that I have here. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And you can see it's got a good solid tip on this, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, yikes, I don't know if I'll get one out of this. I was hoping to get a piece of wood that I could turn into a tent peg. I will baton this down. We'll see if we can't turn one of these into a tent peg. All right, I gave myself an almost impossible task. Let's just see if I can put this back together so you can see here is one of the quarters from that split. Uh, I split it apart, but <laughs> okay. This is not something you turn into a tent peg. This is something you just throw in a fire because it's just, well, it's impossible to work with. But I can still use both of these pieces to do the two separate tasks of turning into a tent peg. The one where you create the L7 notch and the other one where you put a point on the end of it. But I'm going to just use one of stick each for that task. So put that aside. So once again, as I always say, this is a demonstration, not a um, tutorial on making tent pegs, but a demonstration on the ability to cross baton and then clean out a notch. Yep, that's about as far in as I want to go to create a notch. Now, the idea here is that this notch is representative of any number of notches that you may use in bushcrafting, creating trapped triggers or any other number of crafts for making with so there you go that was easy it's actually very comfortable and the edge on that just <laughs> actually works really nice small knife but boy is it ever capable okay that's one half of a tent pick the other half will be the point so let's do that all right this is turning out to be more of a challenge than i really thought not so much a challenge for the knife but for me this is rock maple i wanted to just remind that this is a tough 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 hardwood, hence the name rock maple, right? But again, the point of this uh, demonstration is to see what it feels like to hold the knife in reverse grip like this. And honestly, it's actually not bad. Now remember, it's a short handle, but if you look at the shape, this is gonna reside in my palm, but it's not gonna be uncomfortable. And again, there is a bit of a thumb a scallop on each side. It is meant for thrusting, but it's serving the purpose I've used being able to use this knife in reverse grip like this. Now, it's not something I don't think I'd want to do for extended periods of time, but I still feel like I have full control on it. So let's just see. This is the chest lever cut, but it certainly bites in. Oh man, that's hardwood. Why did I do that to myself? This makes better firewood than it does tent pegs, right? It's excellent firewood or tool wood. But if you're making tent pegs, don't go looking for rock maple. They'll last forever, but they'll take forever to make. How much more do I, oh geez, I still got some more, more work to do here. Let's just see about how well this digs in. Yeah, see, it's definitely digging in. If I wasn't using chest lever, I don't think I could bring the end of this down easily anyway. All right, not quite a point, but pretty close to it. Smooth cuts. Let's just drop that for a second, examine the blade. Yeah, so, yeah, oh yeah, this is still holding. This is what ADCRV2 does. It just holds and holds and holds and is still easy to sharpen. Okay, one more test would be feather sticking. Oh boy, I don't know. Okay, we're gonna give it a try anyway, but just as in case, I did. I do have a piece of pine that I split out here, which I know should work better as long as the knife does its job. Rock maple will work. It's just, it's a lot of work to, to feather rock maple for anyone who has done so. So let's just see. So I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna find, lay it flat, find my edge and start working it down. 
I'm making curls, but I'm also losing them. There, I've got a good one for a starter. Hopefully, it'll hold the rest of them on. All right, I'm getting curls on this. Actually, it's not doing bad. It's doing better than I was expecting. Now, I have been using this, and I have been doing this, but <laughs> I'm always a little nervous every time I pick up a new piece of wood. I say nervous, but, you know, wondering, is it going to work as well, especially when you hit the record button on a video. All right, not great, but not bad on a piece of rock maple. Let's just take that piece of pine that I have, see if I can't do some curls on this. Oh, what a difference, right off at the top. Boy, this is old, though. I'm losing them. Got to adjust my technique a little bit. Ah, this is old pine. And that's the trick when it comes to getting wood for feather sticking, is getting something that is soft enough that you can actually run the edge down, but not so soft that it's going to fall apart on you. So, you know, dry, but not punky. Again, I got feathers on it. Not bad feathers. I wonder if I can get some really, really fine. Uh, no. Okay, these are. These are the little tiny feathers that will catch a spark from a ferrocerium rod. Okay, so here is my impression of using this. I honestly did not expect this to be comfortable in my hand when I was fe started feathering sticking. Now, it is small, and I prefer a much larger handle in my hand, especially if I'm going to be doing a lot of work like this. But just the same, this remains more comfortable than I could have asked for. More comfortable than, certainly than I expected. Uh, my hand slides up to the double guard and it stays there. And that brings me right up to the edge. You can see where the edge starts. Right there's a little tiny sharpening choil and the edge is right there. Which means I get all the power right up nice and close to where the edge is. And that's where you want it. Now again, if I was using this for a longer period of time, yeah, it would get tiring. But I just loosen my grip up a little bit and let the blade do the work. Now here's the other thing, the powder coating. It is making it difficult to feather. It is uh, slowing the blade down. It's creating friction drag on the blade. Uh, you can start to see it wearing off from the batoning and the feather sticking there. So yeah, it's not the best blade for feather sticking with that coating on it, but the blade itself and the edge are doing the job. After that, it's a matter of wood and of course, it's just a little bit of skill. Let's put it this way. It does the job very, very well. But there's one last thing I want to do, and that is scraping. All right, last demonstration. I'm going to do a little scraping with the back of the knife. Now, in full disclosure, as I mentioned earlier, I have actually filed off the coating on the back to give myself an edge that would actually work. But uh, we'll do some scraping with it as it is now. So a little piece of bark for a collection plate. This is that pine that uh, I was just feathering a minute ago. Just scrape some of the feathers off. Not the best collection plate, it's actually splitting on me. But you can see it is doing a good job of scraping the pine down. As I thought it would. Boy, it's getting windy. I hope it does, don't lose everything here. Fat wood, same deal. Let's scrape some fat wood off. Yep, just doing fat wood scrapings like a champ. Not a lot, just enough to catch it. And now ferrocerium rod. Been a while since I used this, let's see. Oh geez, yeah, here we go. Whoa, the wind, but still caught. All right, so it scrapes. Now that I've modified it, it scrapes at least. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Demco Armager 4. So the question I posed when I started this video is, can a knife that's designed primarily as self-defense or tactical be used for bushcraft or outdoor? Well, I won't be able to answer that question for all knives, but I will be able to at least for this knife. Now, I just wanna put this out there as well. 
When you think of it, a lot of the knives throughout history were exactly that. They were double duty knives, like the Bowie. The Bowie was designed primarily as a fighting knife, as a survival knife, as a game processing knife. It was a do-all type of knife. A lot of knives from around the world are exactly that. They may take their primary mission as food prep, uh, game prep or whatever, and then self-defense afterwards, but some of them were designed first for self-defense or tactical use, and then food was also part of the duty that rolled into it. So yeah, I think a lot of knives can be used. Well, certainly this one can be, and that's the question I wanted to know. Could I use this knife, the Armature for for bushcraft? Now, I'm speaking strictly for the clip point, not for the double-edged spear point or the Tanto one, strictly for the spear, spear point. This one absolutely can be. And honestly, it's a fun knife to use. It may be because of its smaller size. It may be because it fits, even though it is a small knife for my double XL hands, it still fits in my hand reasonably well. Not for extended use, but for short-term use, absolutely. It is strong enough for every task. Tip strength is great. Edge strength is great. I'm not going to hurt this knife. And you can see I've put it through some use so that's not as if I just took it out for the first time today. And I've had no image. Oh, by the way, here's something that people often comment on and I want to see if it's actually going to show up. A few times, kind of on purpose, I smacked the rubber just to see what would happen. And uh, although I wouldn't recommend doing this on a regular basis, I don't recommend it at all, uh, I've got no damages might be able to see there's a little bit of a bend where it kind of bent forward a tiny bit from being smacked, but it didn't break off. And that was the, the first question is, is how fragile is the rubber guard on this? Not fragile. Uh, again, I wouldn't, it's not a steel guard or a brass guard, but it's not fragile. It's actually quite a hard piece of material. Will it, could it get damaged from repeated be, repeatedly being hit? Probably, but I try not to do that at, at, at all if I have any choice to the matter. So I just wanted to put that out because I know someone will say rubber handles won't last, won't take the impact. Well, this one certainly has, and it doesn't, and the nice thing is it kind of gives you shock absorption so you're not feeling the impact in your hand like you do with a lot of other knives. Uh, yeah, the, the, the compound material on this does feel very good in the hand. Again, still a small knife, and maybe that's what I'm so uh, drawn to it. It just is the one that's there on my hip for all the small tasks. If I have bigger tasks than this knife can do, then I have another tool with me. That's the way I look at it, but this will do everything. <sighs> maybe not everything well, and that's the, that's the thing I'll say about it. If you're looking for a true bushcraft knife that can do all the bushcraft tasks well, this probably is not the one you want. This is the one that can do them all reasonably well. And I say reasonably well. Now, not everybody is interested in, in learning how to master the art of feather sticks, and this can be a lot of work. But this is not the one you want to try to master feather sticking with because, well, with that coating on it, uh, it just makes it a little hard. It's not the shape of the blade or the edge or the geometry. That seems to work quite well, but it is the coating that makes it a little bit difficult, you know, creates quite a bit of friction going down. You know, it'd be interesting is if Armature produced one of these either in stainless steel of some type, although the, you, you got to hand it to this ADC RV2, that's a tough, tough steel, or maybe a one with a bare steel. I might even take the coating off this just to see what I can come up with, just as an experiment. If that works out or if I do it, I'll bring it back and show you how it turns out because I think it'd be a better performing knife for bushcraft tasks if it didn't have the coating on it. But as a tactical knife, you want the coating on it, of course. And for rust protection, it helps as well. Although, as you can see, it is wearing off of the side. So over time, it's going to be exposing metal regardless. Uh, wrap it up. Yes, this knife can do bushcraft tasks very well, given its original mission is not bushcraft. At the same time, it's not the one I would buy for that purpose. But if you're looking for a knife that can serve dual purpose, maybe a belt knife, self-defense knife, everyday carry knife even, it's a little large maybe, but everyday carry, and do bushcraft, then this is not a bad choice. And here's the best part, the cost. Yes, they're made in Taiwan, but of course, if this was made in the US, it would cost a lot more money. But the price is very, very reasonable for a knife of this quality. And that's the thing I wanna put out there. To get a knife made of 80 CRV2 at this cost, you're going to pay a lot of money in other places. But Demko's been able to keep the price down by shipping them or get having the craftsmanship done offshore. 
And the quality control, well, okay, I've got one knife. I can't necessarily say this for all the knives, but at least this knife, it was spot on. It, it, it just, you know, looked like it was hand-picked. I don't think it was. I think it came directly from their warehouse. So, okay, I think that's enough rambling on about it. Do I like the knife? Yes, a lot. Is it my first choice for bushcraft? No, but I have no troubles picking it up and using it and enjoying it. So I can recommend this knife. I can't comment on the other, the spear point or the Chanto designs, of course. Um, yeah, I'll put all the specifications and the links to where you can take another look at this knife in the video description below. I want to thank Mike Wallace again at Demco Knives for sending this out so that I could share it with you. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.